Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. Tori getting down to the <laughs> intro. <laughs> the nitty gritty. <laughs> you guys really should tune in on WNOXFM.com. We have you know, a good time. A lot goes on in the studio <laughs> that you don't hear through the microphone. <laughs> I just spend my bit of the hour trying to crack Patrick up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to make him laugh in the middle of his show. Now, yeah, that's usually not real hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, I kind of alluded to this before the, in the last segment. We have... Um, Republican vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan gave a speech in Colorado this last week, and I want you to hear a few clips from it. Mr. Ryan is a veteran of Washington, and as such, deep down, I believe he believes government has the answers to people's problems, just like Mitt Romney does, just like Joe Biden does, just like Barack Obama does, and just like every bureaucrat in Washington and most of the government throughout this nation does. Here is a small morsel of truth you can munch on as we start off. We also want to make sure that people have the skills they need to get the kinds of jobs and careers of the 21st century. See, he wants to make sure you have the skills you need to get the job you want. How does that happen? Well, if he is going to make sure you have the skills, then you can infer from that that he will be providing them. But Mr. Ryan isn't going to dig into his pocket to fund this sort of operation. Now, he's got money, but not that kind of money. He is going to reach into your, your pocket to fund it. Because that is what government does. It takes money from you and gives it to someone else. You remember when you voted for that, don't you? You remember the vote we had a while back where we all decided we would chip in and pay for an education for anyone who wanted it? Oh, you, you don't remember that? Oh, yeah. It's because we didn't do it. <laughs> Just in case you started to think about what he was saying, he said this is to let, you know, he, he said this to kind of let you know he's, he's on your side. We believe in the promise of this country. We believe in the idea of this country. Great. Him and Mitt believe in the ideas of this country. What might those be? Let's listen and find out. What we are offering is a very clear contrast, a very clear choice. What kind of country do you want to have? What kind of people do we want to be? We want that American idea, that opportunity society with the safety net that's there to help people who can't help themselves, that's there to help people get back on their feet who are struggling. Oh, okay. I am glad we got that cleared up. Their ideas are exactly the same as those in Washington and all governments all around the country. And even though they, they're the same as President Obama. In case you missed it, here's that clip again. Just part of it. That American idea, that opportunity society with the safety net that's there to help people who can't help themselves. That's there to help people get back on their feet who are struggling. That American idea, that opportunity society with the safety net that's there to help people who can't help themselves that's there to help people get back on their feet who are struggling. That same statement could have come out of the president's mouth or any other liberal Democrat who might be giving a speech. I've said this over and over. There is not a hill of beans difference between the two major parties or their candidates. The American idea is not an opportunity society with a safety net. That is why we are having the problems we have today. These guys just do not understand anything but their big government mindset. I don't think it is possible for them to even imagine any other solution other than one involving the government. The government is not responsible for providing anyone with a safety net. Keeping it simple... The reason is the government would have to take money from one person and give it to another to provide that net. 
something that is blatantly an American, or used to be anyway. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, if you haven't been told before. Me, nor anyone else, is responsible for providing for you. You are the only person responsible for that. I'm sorry if you're sick, disabled, or born with some kind of disadvantage. The plain and simple truth is, I'm not responsible for your predicament. So I shouldn't be held responsible for paying for it. That is the cold, hard truth of life. But having said that, I think there is a moral obligation for us to take care of one another as much as we can. But there is not a constitutional requirement for it. You absolutely have to know the difference. Otherwise, you start trying to legislate all sorts of things based on your moral compass, which may not be the same as others and frequently isn't. Morals are not rights. Getting back to Mr. Ryan's speech, in this next clip, he describes what he thinks is government's role in this country. Nothing is stopping you from meeting your destiny. Our job is to get the barriers out of your way. So he is going to get the barriers out of your way. That is in direct conflict with his concept of the American idea of providing a safety net. How are you going to pay for that net? Through taxes. And taxes are a barrier, and a big one at that. In this next clip, he reassures the audience and the country they know what they are doing and what they stand for. We know who we are. We know what we believe. We know what we need to do. And what we need is leadership. Yes, we do need leadership. But neither the Democrats nor the Republicans are providing it in any of their candidates. They are all giving us the same lines. They are all standing for pretty much the same things. Here, Mr. Ryan tells us they are going to get back to our founding principles. We are not going to try and replace our founding principles. We're going to reapply them. Ah, good. We are getting back and reapplying the founding principle of supplying a safety net to everyone in this country. Y'all remember reading about when this country was founded. No one was promising us anything. But fortunately, the government was willing to tell everyone that it would work out okay. That we wouldn't have to work hard because no matter what, the government would be there to help us with a check if things didn't go our way. I remember reading the fond recollections of the pioneers telling their stories of courage and daring. And they had that inner self-confidence because they knew they had the government to fall back on when times got rough. Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, all those great people owed their boldness and fearlessness to the fact the government was right there in case something happened. The government would pay for their health care to cure whatever sickness they might have caught out in the wild or fix any injury they might have received, you know, fighting Indians or whatever. And if they couldn't provide for themselves, the good government was right there to help them along, to take care of them until their dying days. What a great sense of relief that must have been for all those early settlers. Of course, I'm being facetious, but I think I made my point. If Mr. Ryan truly believes the people of this country are owed a safety net, and that is one of the original American ideas, then he is either too ignorant to be in office, or he's just telling people what they want to hear. And if he's doing that, then he's no better than a liar or a charlatan. Again, someone not fit for office, and maybe even more so given our political current political climate. So, what does he really believe? Well, I don't know. Why doesn't someone call him out on this? Again, I don't know. I know why the media doesn't, because they agree with him. But I don't know why people support him when he clearly either doesn't know what made this country great, or does know, yet refuses to acknowledge it. 
Either way, why vote for him and Mitt if this is what they're going to give us? Mitt wants to repeal and replace Obamacare. The repeal part is good, but the replace part is not. His running mate believes we should have a safety net for everyone. If you want to make a difference, vote in the presidential race for someone else, be it a write-in for Ron Paul, the libertarian candidate Gary Johnson, or one of the other third-party candidates, anyone but one two major parties. The message will be sent to the major parties if one of the third-party candidates makes a good showing in the election, or even if all the third-party people, if we lumped them together and it shows a substantial number of people are dissatisfied with both major parties. The difference is in Congress anyway. I've talked about this over and over. It's, it's Congress who makes the laws, Congress who can dictate what's actually going to happen. So what we need to do is elect good, freedom and liberty loving candidates to Congress. Then use this presidential election to send your message of protest. Since you are essentially voting for the same people no matter which way you go, they can the, the the president cannot do anything, I said, without the approval of a strong Congress. And if we have a strong Congress, they will stand up to the president and their cronies anyway. So having this strong Congress is much more important than whatever celebrity, and that's how they're made out to be nowadays, but whichever celebrity ends up winning the presidential election. If they're going to do the same kind of things then who cares who wins other than the people whose livelihoods depend on their candidate winning and who cares what they think anyway they are just sucker fish hanging on to the bigger fish trying to get some scraps of food because they don't want to work for it themselves so as i said concentrate on congress get good people in congress and use the presidential race to send the message because the president can't get any of his stuff done without Congress going along with it. Well, we're up on the bottom of the hour here in the Patrick Reagan Show, halfway through already, speeding through. When we come back, we'll have some stuff on Mitt Romney, maybe Syria, maybe Iran. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This is Patrick Reagan's with the Patrick Reagan Show. We'll be back after these couple of messages. 